Magandang hapon, Malacanang Press Corps. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you joining us as we share the key directives and decisions made during the recent Fifth National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict, or NTF LCAC Executive Committee meeting. Chaired by President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. today, April 4. Today's press conference is to provide insights into the directives outlined by President Marcos during the aforementioned meeting, which are aimed at furthering the efforts to end local communist armed conflict in our nation. To discuss what transpired during the meeting, we have with us today National Security Advisor Secretary Eduardo M. Año, Executive Director of the NTF LCAC USEC. Ernesto C. Torres, Jr., Secretary Carlito Galvez, Jr., Presidential Advisor for Peace, Reconciliation, and Unity, and Armed Forces of the Philippines Chief of Staff, General Romeo S. Bronner, Jr. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Okay, we begin with uh, Secretary Año, sir. Thank you, Daphne. Magandang hapon sa ating lahat. The NTF LCAC is pleased to report the results of the PIP Execom meeting of the NTF LCAC. The President has directed the immediate implementation of the amnesty program for the remaining members of the CPP, NPA, and NDF, since Congress has already concurred with the proclamation. With the proclamation. I am joined today by Secretary Charlie Galvez, who will give us the details of the amnesty program. The President has also reiterated his directive made last year for government agencies to activate their respective project development office for the implementation of NTF LCAC projects in their respective agencies. He asked the DILG to share the template of the DILG E070 localization PMO to all national government agencies for their reference. The Barangay Development Program, or BDP, has established or was established with the end goal of bringing development to conflict affected communities. Since the program's inception, a total of 30.4 billion pesos have been allocated to benefit some 4,501 barangays nationwide that were cleared of NPA influence. However, under the 2024 General Appropriations Act, only a total of 2.6 billion or 2.5 million per barangay was appropriated. The President said that the 2.5 million per barangay is small. He said, we have to do more, we have to do better than that, and we will try to reach 10 million per barangay. The President has directed the Cabinet to increase the financial support to the 846 BDP barangays for 2024. He tasked the DBM to allow the 846 barangays to access the FALGU, or the financial assistance to LGU, so that the requirements for farm-to-market roads and water system and sanitation can immediately be funded this year. The DILG and the DBM will crunch the numbers and work out the immediate implementation of the President's directive. The President also directed the NTEP LCAC to propose specific programs and projects for continuous implementation of projects for the 5,430 barangays that have been part of the BDP program since its inception. The President also directed the Cabinet to study the proposed 20 24 to 2028 NTF LCAC roadmap. He directed the OPAPRO and the DND to submit their comments which seeks, which seeks to institutionalize the NTF LCAC's transformation program for combatants, their families, and barangays. Under the proposed roadmap, the NTF LCAC has crafted a roadmap to ensure a path to unity, peace, and development during the term of the Marcos administration. The roadmap has two tracks. Track one addresses the primary issues and root causes of the communist armed conflict, emerge strong and dynamic communities, and institutionalized peace and development initiatives. 
track to ensure that former rebels are fully mainstream to contribute to nation building. Communities are empowered to resolve issues through a consultative decision making process. And all sectors are united to res resist threats of terrorism. The roadmap will significantly contribute to the President's Philippine Development Plan 2023 to 2028, notably Chapter 13, I mean, Philippine Development Plan 2023 to 2038, notably Chapter 13, ensure peace and security and administration of justice. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Año. Next, we have Under Secretary Torres. Uh, good afternoon, uh, friends from the uh, media. Uh, we would be giving you details uh, in this afternoon's press conference on the items that were discussed uh, uh, a while ago with the uh, president himself presiding the, uh, the fifth NTF LCAC uh, meeting. So the, uh, the, different, the six items that were enumerated by uh, our secretary, NSA Anyo, um, was already shared with you. And uh, we will just be discussing this uh, along the way as we progress in our um, briefing. Thank you. Thank you. Secretary Galvez. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody, to our uh, media friends. Uh, on the part of the OPAPRU, uh, the OPAPRU is uh, in charge on the local peace engagement track of uh, the ntfl -CAC. At the same time, we are now uh, monitoring on the development of the amnesty. Uh, for Papro, we are uh, recommending uh, to the president and uh, to the NTFL CAC that uh, we need to you know, we need to really uh, comprehensively uh, made a transformation roadmap wherein um, this this will delve more on the combatants, their families, and the communities, including the barangays and uh, the provinces. As of this moment, the Papro is uh, concentrating on the localization of the transformation roadmap. We will be visiting 56 uh, provinces. We have already visited 26. Yesterday, we have visited Agusan del Sur, and uh, uh, then, uh, this, coming, uh, this coming April 12th, we will visit uh, more or less uh, south, south or North Cotabato. Uh, we will be uh, ready for any questions uh, pertaining uh, to different uh, aspects of the NTF Okay. The floor is open. Any questions from the media? Alexis Romero, Philippine Star. Microphone, please. Secretary Galvez, any update on the policy of the Marcos administration to pursue the peace negotiations with the NDF? Uh, the the uh, uh, consultation is still un un uh, ongoing. We have visited uh, uh, most of the camps and also we visited some of the provinces. Uh, we have already visited Western Mindanao Command. Uh, we, uh, we have also visited uh, Northern uh, Luzon Command and also sa South, uh, Southern Luzon Command. Uh, we also uh, have uh, uh, good discussions with uh, the different uh, uh, commanders of the Philippine Army. And uh, we are you know, we're getting some positive uh, uh, feedbacks. But for now, I, I cannot, you know, I cannot uh, discuss all the details because uh, the, you know, the, the talks is still some sort of ongoing. So when will, there, when will you conduct at least the informal talks, the next informal talks? So we are still waiting for the, you know, for the decision of the, the president. Thank for, you, but for now, uh, we are we are no, we are on the uh, on the process of uh, consulting, including the you know, the CSOs and also uh, the religious sector. What what particular matters were consulted? Uh, what ano yung pinag-usapan sa consultations? Uh, the consultation is uh, to gain uh, some constituency on uh, the peace process. What will be the you know, the, the their comments uh, pertaining on uh, the process? Uh, what will be the you know, the details of the framework and also the some of the meat of the uh, final peace agreement. But for now, I cannot discuss uh, these things because uh, I, I'm still waiting for the guidance of the security cluster. Thank you. Chona Yu, People's Journal. Sir, uh, do you have figures kung ilang members ng CPP, NPA, NDF ang target na bigyan ng amnestia and uh, sino yung mga high profile na under review ngayon yung amnesty nila? Uh, before I turn the uh, mic to uh, Secretary Galvez, una-una, uh, binigyan na ng ating go signal ng ating presidente na i-finalize yung IRR para magsimula na. And uh, initially, uh, mayroon ng 1,500 applicants from the CPP-NPA. 
uh, yun ay ipoprocess kapag uh, ma-finalize na yung IRR. Sa other details, uh, I'll give the floor to Secretary Galvez. So, uh, as of this moment, uh, yung ating na National Amnesty, Amnesty Commission, ina-organize na natin yung tinatawag na Local Amnesty Board. Ito yung uh, uh, more or less uh, 17, no? 17 Local Amnesty Board in different regions. Ito yung mag-poproseso uh, at mag-assess kung uh, either yung, ano, yung uh, ina-apply na, na amnesty will be, uh, will, be, ano, will be eligible or not. Sa ngayon, ang uh, nakita namin, we are expecting more or less uh, 1,000 na uh, 500 from the CPP and PA. And uh, I, I believe it will increase uh, uh, in case na magkaroon na tayo ng uh, tinatawag natin na uh, uh, proseso. Okay, Harley Valbuena, DZM. Hello, good afternoon po. Uh, sirs, now that uh, the government is uh, shifting its focus from uh, internal security to external defense, so how long will it take until we can fully claim our victory against communist insurgency so that we can uh, join in uh, refocusing our forces to external security. Uh, first of all, no, ang ating uh, NTF LCAC uh, roadmap is up to 2028. So kahit na nagta-transition yung ating armed forces from internal to external, uh, maraming pa role ang armed forces dito. Uh, particularly, ang ating goal is to... Uh, dismantle the 11 weekend guerrilla fronts up to the end of the year. And uh, this will also uh, include dismantling 26 vertical units and party organs within the 27 sub-regional committees and 14 regional party committees. So the PNP and the armed forces will work closer uh, because some areas na uh, cleared na will have to be handled by the Philippine National Police as the uh, uh, armed forces transition into uh, the external defense mode. But there will always be uh, tasking for the armed forces of the Philippines uh, all the way because it's part of the ntfl -CAC. So I'll uh, give the floor to uh, our Chief of Staff, uh, General uh, Romeo Browner. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So. Uh, on the part of the armed forces of the Philippines, we have uh, <clears throat> set our deadlines for our units on the ground to dismantle the uh, remaining weekend guerrilla fronts, to address the vertical units of the uh, New People's Army, and also to continue to uh, uh, dismantle the regional party committees and the sub-regional committees. No? So, nagbigay tayo ng mga targets sa uh, mga units natin. Kaya uh, kung mapapansin po ninyo, ay halos uh, every day ay nagkakaroon po tayo ng mga armed encounters. No? Not just between the armed forces of the Philippines and uh, the members of the New People's Army, but also with the local terrorist groups. So, uh, we, we launched an expansive and intensive uh, military operations uh, against all of these uh, threat groups. Sir, so, uh, kapag dumating na po tayo sa point na we have already ended the communist insurgency, so we can now say that we can consolidate all our forces to external defense? Yes, uh, that is correct. Uh, but even now, as we are fighting the, uh, the uh, internal uh, security threats in our country, we are also slowly shifting already to territorial defense. That is why you will notice that uh, the modernization program of the armed forces of the Philippines is very ambitious. <clears throat> so we have uh, made sure that uh, we will be able to achieve a level of uh, modernization for the armed forces of the Philippines that will be able to at least, no. Uh, deter attacks to our country, to our territory, and uh, achieve a certain level of uh, defensive posture against uh, any uh, threats that will be coming from outside. Joyce Balancho, ABS-CBN. 
Um, Vice President Sara Duterte, as the co-vice chair, was she present during the execo meeting? I'm just curious how uh, the discussion went because before she gave a statement urging the president to stop giving amnesty to communist rebels. Yes, uh, she attended the uh, NTEP LCAC meeting uh, this afternoon and uh, uh, she's supportive to the president. And uh, there, there was a very good discussion, particularly on the proposed uh, roadmap and some uh, uh, actions that were uh, have to be taken. So all along the meeting, I don't see Vice President. Yeah. I, I believe yung, ano, yung uh, sa, against sa amnesty, uh, we already explained uh, to the Congress and Senate that uh, the amnesty, uh, kasi hindi lang siya, kasi pati yung mga senador at saka yung mga congressmen before, they don't want uh, to have that ano, uh, amnesty to the rebels. But we explained to them that uh, those, ano, those uh, be subjected to the amnesty is, are those, ano, those uh, more or less 40, uh, 40,000 uh, CPP and PA that have already, already surrendered. Does it include yung ano yung mga nakakulong at the same time yung mga nandoon pa sa taas ibig sabihin yung amnesty is only involving those who already uh, uh, taking cognizance of their no their their situation and they go, went back to the, to the faults of the law already eh nakaramihan po dito may mga iba po na mayroong mga warrant of arrest yung iba nakakulong Julie Aurelio Philippine Daily Enquirer First, just to clarify on that, uh, the Proclamation 404 concurred by Congress said that those covered by the amnesty are former members of yes. QP and PA. And uh, what Secretary Anyo earlier said was the, amnesty, the immediate amnesty was for remaining members of the CPP and PA. Is this going to be under that same proclamation or will, is this a, a new proclamation now? I believe yung ano yung uh, uh, yung uh, aming uh, discussion with the Senate of the Congress. They understand that uh, those uh, who are be uh, will be um, uh, giving the amnesties only for the forty thousand uh, surrenders. Those one of those uh, who are still in the in the mountains. Uh, ang ano po natin yan is uh, the you know the the amnesty commission will determine now if there will be you know there will be kasi ang natin yan, uh, the National Amnesty uh, Commission will be given the, uh, the, the, uh, the approval to, uh, to adjudicate based on the proclamations given by the President. Ito yung 1,500, sir? That yes, you yes, you yes, yes. Okay. Uh, it, might, it might increase pa. Initial, Initial pa lang yung applicants. Kasi Initial ang, applicants. ano natin is uh, basically gusto ng, ng uh, iba. Alam mo naman yung, ano, yung Pilipino, titingnan muna nila kung maganda. Pagka once nakita nila na uh, it become favorable to them, many will apply. So to uh, to sum it up, para bang the immediate amnesty for the remaining members is parang expanded coverage of the amnesty. Program? Yes, yes, uh, it might, it might, no, it okay. might. Uh, but uh, definitely, the uh, coverage kayon for the meantime is uh, those who, who re really surrendered Thank and you, go sir. go back to the faults of the law. Okay. Alvin Baltasar, Raja Pilipinas. Secretary Anyo, uh, magandang hapon po. Uh, today po ba ilan na lang po yung strong force ng CPP and PA? Uh, as of the latest report of NICA, uh, ito na yung tinatawag natin validated figures. Uh, there are about 1,576 remaining uh, NPAs and 1,406 firearms. Uh, kasama doon sa amnesty, kasama sa package, sir, yung ano, automatic so surrender nila yung mga armas sila? No? Well, uh, first we have this ECLIP program. Ano? Uh, bago naman yan mag-avail ng uh, amnesty, dadaan yan sa ECLIP program. May renumeration din yung firearms. So, may mga surrenderist tayo na may firearms, merong wala. Uh, Inaccommodate natin yan. So, mayroon naman tayong ECLIP committee. Uh, so, lahat naman yan ay dadaan, pati validation. But, uh, uh, sa conference kanina, ay uh, pinaghahanda na rin natin yung uh, uh, particularly DILG and DND na i-anticipate natin na magkakaroon tayo ng mga uh, surrenderies uh, within the coming weeks and months. And we expect na Ito 1,576 ay uh, pwedeng posibleng 
maging uh, surrenderist. Sir, iabot na lang po. Sir, napag-usapan din ba sa meeting yung uh, posibleng magkaroon ng intensyon yung mga magbabalik loob na maging part sila o maging integri sila later on? Maging integri? Uh, wala yan sa mga pinag-uusapan. Pero yan, may mga programs tayo dyan na existing naman. Ano? Uh, meron tayong mga, like for example, with the MNLF before, no? naging integris, yung CPLA uh, na pasok sa armed forces. So hindi yan, nagtatapos lang dyan. No? Ang, sabi nga natin, eh, ang objective natin is transformation of these people to become productive citizens yes. of our uh, country. Raquel Bayan, Radio Pilipinas. Mr. Secretary Galvez, po, I know you mentioned kanina, um, nasa process pa po tayo ng pag-aayos ng pagbibigay ng amnesty. Pero sir, can we expect na within the year po makakapag-grant na po tayo? De definitely, definitely. Sa ngayon lang kasi yung first uh, semester natin, uh, more on admin uh, natin, yung uh, administration at saka yung pag-abubuo ng uh, local amnesty board. And uh, karanihan po ng ating mga commissioners, Uh, napupunta po sila sa different areas in order to ano, to, to, ano, to conduct yung uh, information and education campaign. So for now, ang, ano, ang nak nakita namin yung first uh, semester is more on admin. And then now, uh, hopefully, by, ano, by the third quarter and fourth quarter, uh, nandun na po yung mga tinatawag natin na submission of the, the amnesty uh, uh, application. Kaya po yung, ano, yung hiningi po namin na uh, Uh, kaya sa ating mahal na presidente is two years kasi yung one year natin ano, na nangyari noon uh, no previous uh, administration naglapse po uh, doon pa lang sa reorganization but uh, we are so happy that uh, we are given in two years at least yung last year namin ano, na reorganization meron pa kami at least meron ano, six months pa po ano, for pre preparation of the IR for the IRR uh, nire-review na po ng National Amnesty Commission nakaprepared na po yun actually Uh, ginagawa na lang po natin is uh, binibet na lang po natin sa mga concerned agencies. Sorry, if I may add. Oh. Uh, if I may add to, to, the, uh, to the reply of the Secretary Galvez, part of the preparation also for the implementation of uh, the amnesty program is the evolution of our halfway houses into yeah. peace centers. Yeah. Diba? If, if you may recall, yung ating mga halfway houses, uh, it is the facility kung saan na uh, Uh, na de-radicalize, na natitrain, and uh, na prepare yung mga FRs natin to go back to the mainstream society. So, with its ev evolution to uh, peace centers, kasama rin yan sa uh, uh, and approved ng ating Pangulo during the, last, uh, during the last Executive Committee meeting, and we are already in the process of uh, evolving these halfway houses to peace centers. So, when the time comes na full full ano na tayo, full blown na yung ating implementation ng mga peace centers, we would expect that there would be a peace center at least no, in every, uh, in every province. So it would facilitate the, uh, the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the implementation of the, um, the, uh, the peace uh, amnesty program. Okay. Jean, sorry. Sir, um, hindi lang po ako ng update. Last year po, the Philippine government signed a joint communique with NDFP um, three months or four months after the signing po. Ano na po kayo ng mga nakita nating uh, improvement on ground? Uh, sa, sa ngayon, ang uh, na natin na nagkakabibil tayo ng constituency, isa, isa, isa na yung tinatawag natin na uh, including sa international uh, uh, di diplomacy na we wanted to, to, to implore na kailangan natin talagang tapusin yung ano eh, yung yung uh, to end this uh, armed conflict because uh, uh, yung nga sabi ni Presidente na there, there will be no winner. So for us uh, I, I think the building of constitution including yung, yung ating uh, member ng uh, religious sector we wanted to convey uh, yung tatawag nating uh, public diplomacy that uh, the, the, you know, the use of armed struggle is already an anathema to, no, to, to our society. Uh, we can solve uh, a lot of issues peacefully. Yun ang, ano, yun ang uh, inano namin binibuild namin. And I believe um, we would like to convince uh, the other side also that it's better to talk rather than to, no, to, to wage yung armed struggle. Okay, Jean Mangalus, Inquire.net. Good afternoon. Um, can, I, can you please elaborate on what the difference would be between the halfway, halfway house and the peace center? Okay, uh, yung halfway houses natin kasi dito dinadala yung ating mga surrenderies uh, for them to be processed no, uh, under the eclipse. 
So part of the process is to uh, first uh, interview them so that uh, the, uh, the halfway house, the, the center manager, would determine what particular interventions would be, uh, uh, would be given to the, uh, to the uh, uh, FR. So DSWD is usually the, uh, the center manager. Tapos meron din tayong mga testa dyan to provide training kung ano yung mga skills ng FRs natin. Uh, DOLE comes in also. Uh, depending on the, uh, on the program that would be uh, uh, designed for a particular FR, dun ginagawa sa halfway houses yan. But yun lang yung proseso from, uh, uh, from surrendering, the radicalization, and preparation for them to go back to the mainstream society. So with the evolution to peace centers, parang one-stop shop na siya sa isang, uh, uh, sa isang uh, FR na nagbagong buhay. So all the processes that may be required of him or her uh, to complete yung kanyang uh, uh, amnesty ay uh, doon nagagawin sa mga peace centers. So at the moment, ang pilot na peace center na established na ay yun nandun sa Agusan del, Agusan del Norte. And there there are seven uh, other provinces na ipapilot test ito with the aim of having at least uh, one peace center per per province. Uh, can, I, can I add on that? Uh, actually, advanced na yung uh, Agusan del Norte dahil kasi yung halfway house nila, uh, we coordinated with NHA. Yung mga, no, yung mga, mga tinatawag, ang tawag namin kasi friends rescued eh. Yung ating mga friends rescued. Uh, binigyan na ng houses ng NHA. In fact, ang ano lang namin ngayon, ang uh, aming... Uh, ginagawa ngayon. We engage uh, more on sa convergence with uh, agriculture kasi nakikita namin agriculture will uh, play a uh, department of agriculture will play a very important role because uh, yun ang ano yun ang tinatawag namin yung long term eh. Uh, for, no, for the DSWD, uh, DOLE, uh, yung mga tupad at saka yung ano natin, yung, yung, yung TESDA, these are transitional tinatawag namin bridging program for uh, three, uh, three to four years time. But basically uh, ang ating ano, ang ating uh, livelihood sa ating ano uh, sa ating mga uh, kababayan lalo na yung ano lalo na yung mga rebel returnees natin we saw uh, we we interviewed them karamihan sa kanila talagang uh, based on agriculture and fisheries so ngayon meron tayong convergence uh, ano sa sa DA malaki ang uh, uh, ma-dedicate natin and i believe uh, magandang may report natin later na the DA is now engaging the, the provincial governors na talagang uh, binibigyan na nila na at least yung ano yung possible uh, uh, possible uh, long term ano, uh, livelihood at saka yung employment yung ating mga FRs um, do you see the eventual integration of the NTFL CAC to the National Maritime Council ah hindi parang malayo yung <laughs> distansya no well, yeah. the, the National Maritime Council has uh, different uh, function and yes, mandate. So. <coughs> okay, we have a question from Anne Soberano, Bomboracho. Good afternoon, Secretary Anyo. Sir, uh, may cabinet meeting po kahapon. May specific instruction po ba or directive si Pangulong Marcos regarding po sa issue sa West Philippine Sea? At uh, ang tanong ko po, pangalawa is, nag-usap po kayo recently with your U.S. counterpart na si Suliban. Uh, ano po yung assurance niya sa Philippines regarding po sa kinakaharap nating hamon sa West Philippines? Thank you po. Well, first of all, no, <coughs> yung uh, cabinet meeting kapon uh, is not about uh, West Philippines or geopolitical issues, but it's more on the uh, economic uh, sector uh, particularly on the economic outlook for uh, 2024 and beyond. So, hindi yan na pag-usapan. Then, uh, secondly, yung uh, telephone um, conversation namin ng counterpart ko si NSA Jake Suliban is actually in preparation for the bilateral meeting of President Marcos and President Biden on uh, April uh, 11. And also the trilateral uh, meeting uh, among uh, Prime Minister Kisida, President Biden, and President Marcos, also on uh, April 11. And of course, uh, NSA Jack Sullivan, on behalf of the U.S. government, uh, assured us of the ironclad commitment of their government uh, to help and support us, especially if, uh, for example, if uh, 
there is going to be a need for the activation of the MDT. So, <laughs> nag-assure lang sila. Uh, the rest ay uh, cordialities na lang. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. This concludes our press briefing. Thank you, Secretary Año, Secretary Galvez, Under Secretary Torres, and General Bronner. Maraming salamat, Malacanang Press Corps. Good afternoon. <coughs>